see all. Um, so this morning's class, we're going to focus on, there's going to be a few different poses, but the, a few of them are quite short because we're doing a lot of back bends. So you should have plenty of energy for the day. Day. So, um, so see how you go. There's there's different ranges you can get into. So you just as normal, just listen to your body. Um, we'll start off with Nadi Shodhana. Just about a minute of that. So just into the breathing. So just blocking the right nostril. Inhale through the left. Block left. Release right. Exhale. And you know this by now. So. Just go through, inhale, and exhale through alternate nostrils. And then just relax and so just release the hands. Move into some deep inhales through both nostrils. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. So then we're going to go into the first pose. So grabbing your block. And we're going to move into supported bridge okay so we're going to do a lot of back bends today so we're easing the back into it before we start doing the harder back bends so this is a really nice way just to get the back the lower back awake now you can place it wherever you like i'm going to come up a little bit higher because i feel like i can today so i'm just going to turn the block up but come up to where you need to but you want to feel that stretch through the front of the hips okay so if you're not feeling that just go a little bit higher. Have the legs stretched out if your back feels okay. If not, bend the knees up and slowly slide the legs forward as your back releases. Bring the hands out wide, palms facing up, chin to the chest. Shoulder blades, just bring them in a little bit towards each other. And just completely let go and just allow the back to open up. Okay, so it's an important pose every day, but today it's really important just to relax in this because we're doing a few more intense back bends. So today, um, with the back bends, just to explain to you that <clears throat> you can't be in back bends for a great deal of time. So those all the back bend poses will be fairly short, intense. So to start off, we do a few back bends and then a, a really deep forward bend, and then we can start moving into getting deeper into the back.
<clears throat> Just keep the breath under control. Always focus on the breath. The last twenty seconds. Bend the knees up. Lift up the hips, release the block or whatever you've got under there. Slowly bring the hips down. We're only gonna be here for about 20 seconds. We move into another back bend. You just feel that, that tension slowly releasing in the lower back. So the, the compression just slowly releasing. When you're ready, just bring the knees into the chest. Just have a little bit of a squeeze, perhaps a bit of a roll on the back. And then just work your way up. We're going to come into um, Sukta Baddha Konasana. So remember Sukta is reclining, so we're going to lay backwards. If you can have your bolster or even a block underneath your back or a towel, Something like that. You can just have your sole, the soles of the feet together, knees out wide. You can use the strap if you like. But you all should know these by now. So you can just pull the strap as you lay back, or you can place the strap over your head and tighten it that way. In whatever way you choose, you, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you can get strap on so if you've got the if you've got a full strap that can get around you i'll just remind you of that you can just bring the soles of the feet together and just place the strap underneath the feet and then the whole body like you're putting a shirt on then tighten the strap up this gives you the best stretch because it really gives you a nice hip stretch. Today we're really after the back bend, so we really need something behind the back. So come into it however you can. But with the strap, it's gonna be on the insides of your thighs, so it's gonna pull those knees back. If you're holding onto the strap, just pull the feet towards the body. And just get into a place where you can find that stillness. Take your time to get in so you can make sure that you can get that stillness in there.
Again, just focus on the breath. So we're opening up those hips and the lower back, lower back a little bit more now. Loosening the hips. About a minute and a half to go. Last twenty seconds. And when you're ready, slowly help yourself up. We're going to come straight up into Arakanasana. So we're going to keep, so if you've got the strap on, just take the strap off. But we're going to keep the soles of the feet together and we're going to come straight into a forward bend. The soles of the feet together, interlace all ten fingers underneath the feet. A little bit tougher to feel that straight after having that back. Bring the shoulder blades together, lengthen through the spine, and then slowly, slowly start coming forward. So just slide your feet forward a bit so you can get that forward bend. You should feel that forward bend now, so you're just moving back. Back and forward, back and forward to get that release in the back. One of the important things to get a good back bend, a good solid back bend, is just to have the hips as loose as possible. That's why these two poses in a row are happening. To try and open up those hips a little bit, give you the strength um, in the back bend. So you're halfway through now. So the last 50 seconds, just focus on breath and just letting go. Just allowing the body to drop. Just release the tension throughout the body. Just feel the body and feel any tension and just release it through the breath.
And when you're ready, slowly help yourself up. And once you get up, up um, we're going to flip over onto our stomach and come into crocodile pose. So set yourself up for a nice minute's break in crocodile pose. Stack the hands, just place the forehead on the hands, feet out wide, toes out, heels in. Just let yourself completely relax. And when you're ready, slowly come up. So just bring your feet together. So we're coming into Bhujangasana. Okay, so Bhujangasana's feet together. Bring the hands to the side of the chest there. And just remember the class the other day, if you were in it, I said you can bring your hands forward if you need to. So you don't always have to have your hands where I've got them is right near the chest or in line with the chest. If you need a little bit more space, give yourself space and move your hands forward. Try and keep them on the mat if you can for these for this pose. But just bring the elbows in. Forward to the floor. Squeeze the glutes and just lift up. And you can come up as high as you like. We're going to be in this for a minute. So just come up to as much as you can come up to. You might only get halfway up. And that's okay, keep the elbows bent or come all the way up. It's totally up to you where you feel is right for you. If you come all the way up, those shoulder blades need to come together as you squeeze the glutes. We're going to be in this position for actually three minutes, but in this particular part of Bush and Gust, I'm going to be in for a minute. So Bhujangas is a really deep back bend, okay? So if you need to drop on the floor and then come back into it, make sure you do that. But keep squeezing the glutes. That's going to support the lower back. So just check where your hips are. Mine just lifted off the floor. So bring your hips back to the floor. It's quite easy when you're in this pose for quite a while to allow the hips to come up. So push the hips into the floor, squeeze the glutes, and then slowly come down. Just for a breath. Then we're going to come back up and we're going to move into what they call Tiriak Bhujangasana, which is twisted. So come up as high as you can, and then you're going to look over the left shoulder. Just be really careful when you look over. That right hip should come more onto the floor. The right shoulder comes around. The left shoulder comes around. And hold there. So we're getting the back bend, but we're getting a twist as well. You should feel the heat building up in this in this type of pose. When you're ready, slowly come back to centre. Reset by either coming down or staying where you are, but you should feel this in the hips. And if you come back into it, then just look over the opposite shoulder.
So just scan your body to feel where you're, you're feeling this. I'm feeling this in the hips mainly. You might feel it in the lower back more. You might feel it in the shoulders, the wrists. Wherever you need to feel it, it's going to come up in this sort of pose. 20 seconds to go. Then come back to center. Allow the body to come down slowly. Bring the feet out wide. Stack the hands. And come into crocodile pose. So it's really important to stay as still as possible in crocodile pose. We just want that back to reset. So we're really manipulating the lower back here. Because the back bends after this, we're going to do a forward bend first, but the back bends after this, we move more up the back into middle and upper back. So if you have any back issues at all, um, Today, they'll definitely go. This is designed, this is like a, a therapy session for some of the, um, with tight, tight lower back mainly or, or middle back. But we've all got tightness in that area in some form. So when you're ready, help yourself up. You're going to come up onto the knees. Then you're going to come up into our favorite pose, standing, and come into dangling. Okay, so I know you're going to love this one. <laughs> so just really, before you move into this dangling pose, what I want you to do is set yourself. So set your feet, set yourself. If you can bring your feet together, bring them together, or just work on what you need for balance. Grab the sides of your hips, grab the, the bone, feel that bony bit of the hip, bring the shoulder blades together, lengthen through the spine, chin away from the chest and then bend. And just make sure you're feeling that tilt of the hips. If you're not feeling the tilt of the hips, come back up and start again. Bring the belly button to the spine as you come down. And once those hips are tilted as far as they can go, you can allow your hands to drop down. You can grab each elbow if you like, or just dangle. I like to just dangle. So what we're doing after that twisted back bend, so Tiriya Pujangasana, is we're just completely opening up that lower back again. So if you just imagine the spine going forward and tilting, we're opening up the back of that spine. So that's really opening up and we're compressing the front of the spine now. Whereas when we're in Pujangasana, we're compressing the back of the spine, opening up through the front. And also hamstrings here are a bonus. Just remember if you need bent knees, have bent knees. So we've got a minute and 20 seconds to go. Just let your head drop.
Beautiful. Everyone's dropping so much more now. Some really good folds happening there now. It's amazing we just focus on that tilting of the hip. It's really good progression. It's awesome. So last 25 seconds. And slowly release, so coming up nice and slow. Beautiful. And just have a stretch up, so just reach the hands up and then bring the hands behind, interlace all 10 fingers and just roll the shoulder blades together because the next pose, that's what we'll need to do. So just roll them together and squeeze while we're in this standing position. And release that and just come into Tadasana. So palms facing forward. Shoulder blades together, stir them up. And when you're ready, slowly work your way down into prone position, so on your stomach. <clears throat> so we're gonna come into um, I'll do it this way, I think. Into a pose called Niralam Bhujangasana. Niralam means Nira means no lam means support. And Bhujangasana is cobra pose. So this one is Bhujangasana. So Bhujangasana is this, obviously, but we're going to take our hands out. So we're not going to use our hands. Okay, so that's the, this is the, the depth of the back bend now. So I know you can all do it. Hands behind the body like we did just standing up. Fire it on the floor, bring the feet together, squeeze the glutes, and then lift the chest up as high as you can go. Okay, so that's the, that's the pose. Just don't try and break any records, just lift up as high as you go. We're gonna hold here for 15 minutes. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> 15 seconds. <laughs> We're gonna hold here for about 30 seconds or so. So just bring the shoulder blades together, Chest up, make sure you're pushing the feet and the thighs into the floor. It's a lot more difficult to breathe, but continually breathe through the nose. Bring the shoulder blades further together. So for the last five seconds, come up as high as you can, but squeeze the glutes, Come up as high as you can and then relax. Come down into crocodile pose. Toes out, heels in if you can. Head on the... on the backs of the hands. So again, you should feel heat, a lot of heat building up. So if you do a series of back bends, you don't really need hot yoga as such because you just do your own hot yoga without the electricity bill. So that's a really nice back bend and opening of the chest. So you're getting a, an extra bit there because we're not supporting ourselves. So the next one is Niralam Salabhasana. So Niralam means no support, salabhasana, locust. So locust pose, we usually come into it like this, come up like that. What we're doing today is bringing the hands behind the head. Bring the feet together. And then what we do is we lift the chest off the floor, bring the arms back and then the legs. So we come up this way to keep bringing the arms back. It's another 15 minute pose. <laughs> yeah. 
That's it, just bring up, yeah, that's it, perfect. Beautiful back bends, it's really, really nice. Now hold there, keep breathing, short breaths, there's shorter breaths, but breathe through the nose. So we've got 10 seconds to go. Bring the elbows back so the shoulder blades come together with the chest up, chin up, come up as high as you can go, hold there. And exhale, release. Just come into crocodile pose. Beautiful. Just allow that back to relax now. It's really important after the amount of back bends we're doing is to continually get a little bit more rest in that spine. So we've got a forward bend now and then another deep back bend, but we've gone for three minutes in the, in the last back bend. So when you're ready, help yourself up and we're going to come into child's pose. So we want child's pose for a few reasons here. One is to relax that lower back. So we're opening it the opposite way. Bring the big toes together, push those hips back. The main thing is hips back to heels. Once the hips are back to heels, back, the hips are back to your heels as much as they can go. Start working your way down. <clears throat> so nice. Three minutes. This is a really important pose. Child's pose. We use it a lot as teachers when we're doing flow classes as a rest. So a lot of people think it's a resting pose. But it's actually a really, really deep hip opener and an amazing lengthening of the spine. So really, really good. And also, it's a very good pose for mental health, bringing the forehead to the floor. And just putting pressure on that third eye, which um, stimulates the pineal gland, so regulates sleep and consciousness patterns. Also connects us with our intuition. So if you've ever got any decisions to make and there's five, six, seven decisions flying through your mind, you don't know what to do, this is the type of pose that'll help you. Just come into this pose. You can even meditate in this pose and just allow the answer to come through. So you're halfway through. The last 50 seconds here. If you had any tightness through the back this morning, it should have already gone. 
one, our mind's completely gone. Just got a nice loose back. And when you're ready, slowly help yourself up. Just slide your body forward and come into crocodile pose. Just allow the blood to flow through the hips, knees and lower back, getting the back prepared for a full back bend in the last pose, the last back bend pose. And when you're ready, just, just look up, bring the feet together, and I'll show you the pose we're going to do. It's Tiriya um, Dhanurasana, which is bow pose, so twisted bow. So what we'll do first is just bring the left hand out in front of you and reach the left hand forward. Bend the right knee up. Reach back and grab the right foot. Now we're gonna do it opposite here. So we're gonna bring the right thigh off the floor and you'll feel yourself roll to that left-hand side, and that's okay. Just bring the thigh off the floor. Now kick into the hand. Then lift the left arm off the floor. That's it. And feel the twist. You feel the twist, and then just keep kicking back and reaching up. So you're bringing the chest up as you kick back. Just get into a stage where you feel the heat coming through the body and hold there. Just hold, keep breathing, keep breathing, lift the arm up. I see some arms dropping, lift them up, lift up, come up, kick, lift up, kick, lift up, kick, lift up, relax. Release the foot, bring the right hand out, bend the left leg up and grab the left foot. Bring the thigh off the floor, you're going to twist to the right a bit. Shoulder blade comes back, right arm up and lift. Get the thigh off the floor if you can. Arm up. Bring, just drop the shoulders down a bit away from the ears, reach up. So reach forward, kick back, reach forward, kick back, come up, hold there. Come up, hold there, and relax. Come down, just come into crocodile pose, we're not finished yet. Toes out, heels in, and relax. So you find that a fairly tough pose. This is when you start getting that touch more intermediate from beginner to intermediate. We start learning these different sorts of poses that we start getting comfortable with a few poses. So we just learn these newer ones just to give us that different, different outlook on where we've got ahead. Because that pose just there is, is to get us prepared for the correct bow pose, correct dhanurasana. We're going to do, do the false one next. It's four bow, um, and I'll show you the, the the full bow pose once we get back up. 
So when you're ready, we'll come into Dhanurasana, but floor bow. So bend both legs up, reach back. This time we lift the chest off the floor, keep the thighs on the floor. Bring the shoulder blades together, chest up, chin up, keep the thighs on the floor. Kick the hands as much as you can, kick the feet as much as you can into the hands, then point the toes, then lift the thighs off the floor. It's a bit easier doing it that way. So bring those shoulder blades together, chin up, chest up. Now just lift the chest up a little bit more as you lift the thighs off the floor and point those toes, come up. You should see the toes over the back of you in the telly. Look up, kick up, come up, bend that back, come up as high as you can go and then release. Back into crocodile pose. And relax. So you feel that breath speeding up. So just calm it down, relax. So it's a lot of back bending we've done. So we're gonna finish with like a forward bend and a twist. It's a lot of, um, a lot of hard poses there today. So if you feel a bit sort of, wow, what am I doing? That's okay because it's just new poses, just moving to that next level slightly. So when you're ready, help yourself up. Come into a seated, seated position, not seated. Bring the feet out in front, grab, the, grab your strap, if you've got your strap around. <clears throat> so I'll show you one um, bow pose. So what we did, that Tyriac bow, what we did there, is we're just getting ready for this pose, which is bow pose, where you grab your toe with your left hand. You can try it if you like, just go in it for a few seconds. And then you grab the toe of the right hand, which doesn't seem that much. And then you lift that leg up. So see that, see where I am? That's bow pose, so you pull back, you're cocking the bow. Okay. Can anyone do that? So just put them together, left leg straight out, right leg up. And then just do the other one. <laughs> so it, it looks easy, but it's, yeah, it's a bit difficult. That's good, and just relax. So that's where that twisted bow pose that gets us ready for that pose. So you can just see where the progressions in yoga go. Okay, so grab the strap. We're going to come into Pashyabhutanasana. So bring the strap around the feet. Even if you can touch the toes, bring the strap around the feet. And inhale, lengthen through the spine. Shoulder blades together, chin away from the chest. Pull up, come down as low as you can on the strap. Working the stomach to the thighs. Now remember, if your stomach isn't on the thighs, that's what you work towards. If your stomach comes on the thighs and you can reach the feet, then you can release the strap and grab the big toes. Work the elbows to the floor and forward to the toes. So holding there. So only grab around the feet if you can grab them comfortably. If you can't grab them comfortably, keep using the strap. Because the more you use the strap, the more your stomach's gonna to come to the thighs, the more you're gonna get that pelvic tilt, and the easier it is to grab your feet 
because when you grab your feet, you've got to pull as hard as you can go. Okay, so that's the idea, is pulling to stretch. When you've enough where you can bend your toes back towards your head, that's when you're in that comfortable, that's when you're in that correct position. So until then, you need to use the strap and keep looking at your toes. And just work towards that position of fold. Keep looking at the toes. So the progression, stomach to thighs, work on that. Once you've got stomach to thighs, you work on grabbing the toes. Once you grab the toes, you work on bringing the elbows to either side of the shins. And once they're on the floor, you bring your head closer to the toes and then lift the heels off the floor. So you've got a minute to go. It's good. If, you, if you're just holding the strap, if you're still holding the strap, I should say, work your hands a little bit closer towards the feet right now. And then just wiggle the hip bones back slightly. And then pull a little bit deeper. Work with the breath. Last 10 seconds. And when you're ready, slowly come up. into Shavasana, laying back into Shavasana. We did that pose so we can just reset the back from all those back bends. And it's a nice deep forward bend as well as hamstring stretch. So your back should feel nice and loose. I'm just going to finish with a bit of a twist in the back. When you're ready, just bring the knees into the chest and don't rush up, just hold the knees there and just roll on the lower back. And just feel really peaceful doing it. So just, just allow the body just to enjoy that movement from side to side. And then when you're ready, rolling up to a seated position, we're going to come into um, twisted deer pose to finish off. So a good three minutes either side we get today, which is really nice. So twisted deer is one of my favorite poses. So we just come into deer, bring the left, left knee down, bend the right knee up, the right leg up, and the knee comes underneath the left foot. Bring the bolster or whatever you're going to lay on to the left hand side and then we're twisting to the left. So wherever that knee comes down, we twist to that side. Get yourself in, into a really nice deep twist if you can. And after all those back bends and forward bends, you, you either feel loose or you might even feel tight at the moment. That'll loosen up. 
But if you're feeling loose, get into a nice, nice twist. And just relax. Now that breath again wants to speed up because we're twisting the spine now. So just so that that nostril breath, inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose. Just keeps us connected to parasympathetic nervous system and, and connected to the vagus nerve, which is the most important part of yoga is being connected to the vagus nerve. The last 20 seconds on this side. Slowly start untwisting. Just come up nice and slow. Take your time to switch sides. So drop the right knee down, the left knee comes underneath the right foot. If you want to open up the hips a little bit more, you can drop that left knee back further down. You don't have to have it under the foot. Put your bolster or your cushion on the right hand side and then slowly twist around. You feel this pose, it's really loosening up your hips. But it's also strengthening the middle back. It's really good for the middle back, this one. And it's helping you learn to control that breath. So the breath speeds up. So we just bring that down consciously into a breath that we can control.
about a minute and 20 to go. So just make sure you sink into this pose now and just completely relax. Could be the last time you get to completely relax in the day. So just make the most of that. Now in the last minute, just connect to the breath and try and bring that breath into the deepest inhales you've had all day. So make the least amount of breaths as possible. Slowly, slowly untwist. You should be nice and relaxed now to come into the final pose, Shavasana. Last few minutes. Let the class just relax. You need to make sure that you get that spine nice and straight now. Bring the shoulder blades together, arms away from the body, chin to the chest and lengthen. Feet apart, drop the toes away. And then just scan your body mentally. Just go through the body, just start at the toes. Work into the feet and then the ankles. Just check in on the lower legs, the knees, the thighs. Now just spend a little bit of time on the hips. Take a few breaths as you focus on the hips and just feel how much more released they are right now. Now just focus on the spine running right up from the hips all the way to the top of the head. Just focus on that and take a few breaths as you're visualizing your spine. Now bring your focus to the space between the eyebrows. Control the breath as you focus on the space between the eyebrows. And just wait until you can feel that pulsating feeling in that position, in that place. Just start feeling it about now, the pulsating of the third eye. Just keep breathing while you feel that. Now go down to the heart. You feel that beat of the heart. Just take note of the heartbeat, the pulsating space between the eyebrows, go back and forward to them too.
and just feel how relaxed you are. Then focus on the breath, just through the nose. Just feel the air coming in and out. And while you're laying there in Shavasana, just give yourself some thanks and praise for being here on the mat, doing some amazing things for your mind and your body. And also while you're there, just a gratitude to someone or something in your life. Then rolling to the right hand side. As you wiggle your fingers and toes, just roll to the side. Make your way up into a seated position. When you get up there, bring those thumbs to the middle of the chest as you bring your hands together. Close the eyes, bring the shoulder blades together. So the sternum is up, take a nice deep inhale. Then exhale. Thank you so much for being here this morning and allowing me to take you through the class again. And hope you all feel awesome. You'll have plenty of energy during the day, believe me. So just enjoy that energy and the mobility in the back. So have a wonderful rest of Wednesday. Namaste.